Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today I wanted to sort of go back to the world of the Law of One and a variety of other different disciplines and talk about consciousness and the 12 densities and this idea and what it means. I've dedicated some discussion of it in the past, but really I want to talk about the way that we shift our consciousness and what we are moving through as we move into the new earth. And beyond that, I've discussed this in everything from the Neville Goddard material to the secret doctrine discussion and the Manly P. Hall discussions where we're talking about some higher level of consciousness that we're moving towards. And I've researched this, and a really good description of this is in the Law of One material. The Law of One material is a set of channeled works given from 1981 to 1984 that talks about how we are moving through these different densities or dimensions. So I wanted to talk about this, and in the Law of One material they discuss the seven densities of consciousness, but do not really talk about what happens beyond that. And is there an eighth or ninth or tenth dimension? And I found some different material that describes 12 different densities or dimensions and what we're moving through. And it is such a beautiful thing when you consider what we're moving through in this creation and We are God, but we're all individually experiencing God in a level of different consciousness. And as we move up these consciousness, our understanding of the Creator changes and grows. This is so amazing and so mind-blowing. You someday could become a planet or a star or even a galaxy. And what do these things mean when we look into space and see a galaxy a solar system, a star, what are they? Don't you want to understand or know what's really going on? We see these planets and we these different astronomical objects, but what are they? It feels like they were seemingly placed there. It feels like they were created, and all of what we're seeing is not some accident. Perhaps it is. But the law of one material would indicate it's not, and there's levels of consciousness And the sun is a living thing. And this has really played with my mind for a while. And I feel like I can communicate with the sun now and the earth. These are living beings and these planets are living beings of immense power. This creation plays host to the most powerful theatrical production imaginable. It is a world masked by the thick of darkness ancient magic, long forgotten past the dawn of day. The most fascinating illusions are conjured out of our very dreamscape. Grand puppeteers are pulling the strings of fate, and there is an infinite array of characters driven by their relentless pursuits to discover the mind of God. Life itself is the stage. Death plays the role of the dark gypsy shadowing our thoughts until its final act. Every single level of detail has been painted into the backdrop of our lives. So fine is the workmanship that we truly believe this world is real. Every now and then, the characters discover they are indeed in a play and the puppeteers have to quickly rewrite the scripts or risk losing the integrity of the show. The characters forget their lines. The fake tree accidentally falls over and a light falls onto the stage. But the show must go on. As Vadim Zeeland explains, the mirror makers, which is the reality we're looking into, is a mirror, do not want you to know they are there. Every single thing in this universe is a frequency of God. From the sun that shines down upon us to the mountains that lay ground beneath us to the oceans that create worlds of islands around us all the way down to the very essence of our souls. Spiritual frequency 
is a method to distinguish the inhabitants of the creation. Just as you tune a radio into radio stations playing a particular genre of music, our frequency can be tuned to pick up signals of the most transformational quality. The music that you're listening to now with Metaverse is an example of this amazing frequency that you can tap into. Human beings are like walking satellites, constantly receiving and transmitting information to the world around them. However, we are only conscious of information that relates to a physical source. Many people are therefore only turned into the frequency that relates to the physical world. We may hear the most exotic of sounds, see the most vivid of imagery, but still completely miss what it was truly transpiring in that moment of time. For every aspect of physicality in our world, there is an essence of spirituality causing it to be there. Since we currently live within the physical world, we are interacting with it on a near full-time basis. However, what we rarely discover are the spiritual foundations that anchor the physical world into existence. Our mind governs the interpretation of the spiritual world. However, spirituality usually plays a secondary role within our lives and is often completely ignored. This very low level of mental commitment explains why we do not ordinarily see or hear or feel the spiritual world. Our mind does exactly what it is told, and that often means concentrating on exactly what we believe is more significant. The truth of the matter is that entire kingdoms of spirituality are breathing life into the world around us, but we are unable to recognize even their existence. The origin of the universe is not without an aptitude to multiply the exact same signature of energy across every single notion in life. The universe has been constructed from various frequencies of energy, and all of that energy has God's essence embedded within it. God is the universe we live in, and God is also the inhabitants that justify the universe into existence. Our Creator has set up the most incredibly powerful school of spiritual learning in order to fulfill one fundamental task. And this is what I believe God's primary purpose for this universe, the creation of other creators. We are predestined to become creators. That is what we're here for. That is what differentiates us from many other very divine beings like angels. By the time we finish all of our spiritual self-realizations, we become creators. This can be seen as the very reason for why the universe exists. Our creator is creating other creators because that is what creators do. There is no secret behind what is actually occurring. God is simply doing what feels most natural. This universe is bound by an energetic law that maintains its stability and prevents the universe from contracting elements of volatility into its foundation. Nothing shall ever truly be created, and nothing shall ever truly be destroyed. The only allowable transition shall be for the transmutation of one frequency of energy into another. This fundamental law gives rise to the notion that God is the sole creator and destroyer of the universe. The term transmutation originates from the art of alchemy, where its aspirants ventured to transmute lead into gold with the fabled philosopher's stone. We as human beings play a role as manipulators of energy and our universe is therefore infinite in possibility due to this transmutable nature. As manipulators of energy, we have been given the backdrop of a duality to choose an appropriate path of self-realization. The duality is the fundamental reason for why the angelic and demonic realms exist. It suggests a world polarized between 
opposing light and dark forces that allows for these contrasting opposites to penetrate everything that exists within it. I do not believe there are actual demonic realms, but perhaps there's something similar. Death is in, as natural as the sun rising in the morning or the moon setting at night. Humans move through the process of life and death every single day. However, only our physical selves ever truly die. Death is the transmutation of a lower frequency existence into that of a higher one. What we recognize as life is actually a premise that enforces the belief of the separateness from God. Death is a continuation of the most significant difference between life and the ultimate realization of the non-separateness from God. Death also plays against some of the greatest spiritual fears, the fear of loss, the fear of the unknown, the fear of discontinuation, and the fear of change. So powerful are these fears that they completely inhibit spiritual growth and enforce the continuation of a lower frequency existence. The primary difference between a lower frequency and higher frequency existence is the amount of consciousness the inhabitants attain. Consciousness is a term given to the total sum of all knowledge and experiences gained from all previous lifetimes. We learn our lessons and raise our consciousness by entering the duality and allowing for experiences to be initiated by both light and dark forces. The point in time when our consciousness learns the irrelevant nature of a duality is when oneness shall redefine our way of life. Human beings are comprised of that which is physical, our body, and that which is spiritual, the soul, or as Ra likes to term it, the mind-body-spirit complex. The soul has a very high level of frequency, while the body maintains a very low level of frequency. Consequently, the body and soul are viewed as being in a state of consistent battling as a result. This battle is what we refer to as inner conflicts. It is also referred to in transurfing as the battle between the heart and mind. These inner conflicts are emotional, physical, and spiritual disharmonies that arise out of our inability to effectively deal with everyday life. The body craves for other lower frequency substances, such as monetary lust and material gain, while the soul keeps trying to raise us higher via self-realization and spirituality. When we learn to silence our inner conflicts is when we can effectively achieve enlightenment. Enlightenment is the result of achieving unity within ourselves and expressing the nature of oneness. Much like the universe is God's inner conflict, its inhabitants are collectively trying to quell inner conflicts between themselves in order to achieve oneness as a whole. On a spiritual level, there is an entire world of possibilities to learn as our frequency alternates depending on our level of self-realization. The more spiritual qualities we discover within our level of self-realization, the higher our frequency will be. Reincarnation is the process that allows for the embodiment of the human soul for the purpose of self-realization. We reincarnate over many lifetimes in order to return to this physical world. With every lifetime, we experience a new physical vehicle that allows the soul to exist within a completely new set of circumstances and a new level of understanding is achieved. Those who have reincarnated over many lifetimes have a strong tendency to be drawn into the world of spirituality as a result. This is because they often become tired of grasping at that which they cannot take with them. From a very high perspective, reincarnation looks like a magnificent white waterfall of energy pouring out from space onto the earth in a constant stream of powerful life. To be part of this system would mean you have been destined to walk the earth in order to achieve self-realization. Upon graduation, you will evolve into the higher form of consciousness to return only if you wish to teach others 
how to achieve such a state of enlightenment as well. A great many souls now seem to be reincarnated on earth from times of Atlantis, maybe 13,000 years ago. The lost civilization of Atlantis was one of the great civilizations on earth to blend both the physical and spiritual into a harmonious civilization. The Atlanteans were more technologically advanced than what we are today. So I'd love to know what it looked like and also maintained stronger personal connections to the creator. The downfall of Atlantis was sparked by its population, focusing on possessions of power and genetics and material lust, rather than maintaining those spiritual ties. This ultimately led to a great many wars that resulted in their civilization collapsing into a state beyond repair. Gernvalo Melchizedek discusses Atlantis on a number of different ways, explaining that the earth was seriously affected when Martians came to earth, which is also discussed in the Law of One. And when they came, they brought this non-loving masculine mindset, which integrated into the earth with a very feminine mindset that had been growing naturally on the planet at the time. It was perfect. The Atlantis civilization was perfect in many ways. And it would be very interesting to hear the stories of those souls and how they felt when their utopia collapsed with the entire continent going into the sea and seeing the loss of humanity where we are at. Imagine us going way ahead and then losing all of it. Our concept of time and our idea that we are at the farthest point that humanity has ever been is just simply not true. Over the last few years, the consciousness of our planet has woken up to correct our detour in evolution, which is what I believe that we're going through, that the universe is constantly going through stages of evolution. So a process of ascension is occurring on many different levels, and that's what's really the interesting part time is but a human observation of the earth's rotational movements around the sun the spiritual world does not recognize time since it doesn't have a sun to differentiate one moment from another something far greater and more powerful was therefore accepted as an appropriate benchmarking system in order to track spiritual progress this spiritual system revolves around dimensional evolvements and spiritually significant self-realizations. Infinity is a long time. And that is what we're going through is infinity. Infinity is a very long time. Though we may not take material possessions with us to the other side, our consciousness takes aboard every major spiritual shift we ever accomplish. Physicality is not a sustainable foundation if we choose to accept a spiritual paradigm consisting of dimensional evolvement rather than linear time. The physical world can be likened to the constantly shifting sands of the desert, here one day and gone the next. You must soon realize that the only real and stable foundation of life is this infinite intelligent God aspect. God always has and always will be there. There will never be a time when you are not connected to God. A significant shift occurs within the human mind-body-spirit complex that Ra refers to when we start to break down preconditioned thoughts of a physical world and adopt enlightenment as the only necessary foundation if our soul is an essence of God, it means our soul has absolute worlds of power waiting to be unleashed. There should be no need for us to live under the premise of such a diminished ability if we are conscious enough to accept that we are indeed God. This is the secret at the heart of all psychic power. So, 
let's talk about the 12 densities, the creator school that we're going through in more detail. Let's think about this. We know that God is the complete universe. And God also looks down upon the universe as a much higher form of consciousness. In your rancha, it is stated that there are 10,000 universes. And the same number is given by Drunvalo Melchizedek with additional layers of universes within each universe. So the universe is God's body. And the much higher form of consciousness is God's mind. On a creator level, there does not need to be a creation for him to exist. Creators exist in a state of pure ecstasy, perfectly heightened by unconditional love. The creation does exist for one primary purpose, to create other creators. A soul enters into the universe to retrace the process of becoming a creator. It's a retracing Because at one point you were God going through the whole process to the point that God now is the entire universe. So you are retracing the steps. That is what the creation exists for, that primary purpose. A soul enters into the universe. Every unique level of the universe is designed to bring forth the qualities necessary to become a creator. God is observing his own creation within the trillions upon trillions of souls in order to personally re-experience unconditional love and discover its unique characteristics literally from the ground up. From the very ground up is the amazing thing about this story. Our soul is therefore a universal witness to the events that unfold throughout time as you become a creator and become aware of your true godhood. Our soul is a universal witness to the events that unfold throughout time. Everything is observed. Everything is accounted for. And the only real option is to live the plan into manifested reality and become a creator yourself. You are a creator. And this is a creator school. That is what we're doing here. What truly differentiates one soul from another is the density or level of consciousness that that soul attains. There are 12 densities, dimensions or frequencies of existence that define the complete universal environment for the necessary self-realizations to come into fruition. Most souls collectively group together within their respective dimensions so they can undergo their realizations with others on a similar level. At no point is it possible for one dimension to exist without all of the others acting in perfect unison. All forms of consciousness must progress through each of the twelve dimensions to graduate. However, a great majority need to recycle within the first seven dimensions before they are comfortably moving on. These twelve dimensions are the foundation of God's creator school universe that we're in now. It's really interesting when you understand that the law of one material goes over the first seven densities. And what goes beyond those densities is not really talked about on the same level. So we're going to go through what I've found from some different channelings of angels and things I've heard from my own higher self that align with this as to what happens in the 8th through the 12th dimensions. Once we go to the 6th and a half dimension, the higher self can go backwards in time. So what's happening, I think, when you look up at the skies and you see a galaxy... You're looking at yourself. You may be, one of those galaxies might be yours 
and I'll explain that as we go on. Life begins by entering the first dimension, which is a very rudimentary existence. The first dimension or first density, which is how much dense the light is in your consciousness, serves as an energetic building block for all higher forms of consciousness. I understood this on a better scale when I went to a seminar in Los Angeles on artificial intelligence. And one of the theoretical ways of building artificial intelligence was from the ground up, that the consciousness learns like a baby. And there is this level of consciousness coming from the most simple on up is the best way to build a consciousness. So life begins by entering the first dimension, which is a very simple, rudimentary existence. A first density existence is generally in the form of a mineral or a rock and is completely unaware that it is indeed alive. Very little is accomplished in the first dimension other than purely existing within the present, in the now, after a very long period of time, a first dimensional existence will undergo what is called a dimensional evolvement, ascension, or movement to a higher density in order to advance to exist within the next dimension. This evolvement marks the very first ascension that an individualized consciousness attains within a complete universal cycle. The need to come into life sparks the first ascension, and this is coordinated with the naturally shifting ascension energies of the planet that it exists upon. When a planet ascends its body, everything there is rebirthed into a new state of existence, and the new state of existence is known as the second density. And our souls have experienced the simplicity of plant life, been as passive or aggressive as any of the members of the animal kingdom and found ourselves completely submerged in the art of nature. Second dimensional existence comes forth in the form of plants, animals, insects, and everything that is considered part of wildlife or nature. Basic processes and functions are now available where movements set the stage for a definable life. The soul will now reincarnate as many species of plants, animals, and insects and gradually start increasing its consciousness one life at a time. The second density will also allow for the introduction of male and female energies that first expose consciousness to the nature of dual forces working with each other. Second dimensional philosophy was touched upon in Buddhism, or the belief that the human soul also entailed multiple lifetimes throughout the plant and animal kingdoms before incarnating into a human body. Living things therefore deserve respect, for they are also in the process of learning to be alive. I have struggled with this as someone who gets ants big time in my kitchen, or faces big spiders this lesson that we should not kill living things such as trees or wild animals because we were once in the same position. This teaching is really more just a fundamental law of unconditional love, of life, of love. We are the earth we live on. While authoring his famous red book, Carl Jung discovered three fields of consciousness that established the mental construct for every living thing. One, the conscious mind, two, the subconscious mind, and three, the collective unconscious. The conscious mind gives us the ability to think and interact with our environment. The subconscious mind acts as a complete storage bank and automatic control center. The collective unconscious is a mass field of information that surrounds the planet and connects all of the subconscious minds on a micro, macro, and environmental level second dimensional existences instinctually operate from the collective unconsciousness. There are overriding archetypes that govern how a particular species is to act by giving it set guidelines and behavioral patterns 
were moving around as if there were one body, large-scale migrations in patterns, methods of hunting and trapping prey, or any behavioral patterns not physically taught or all subconsciously available via the collective unconsciousness. The collective unconsciousness is in the blood. It is therefore a data bank that organically grows and connects everything on the planet. A good analogy to understand this is cloud computing. It's a really good way to look at it, which features wireless connecting networks of computers together with an infinite amount of storage space. Consciousness overlaps multiple dimensions as a result of the collective unconscious housing multiple frequencies of existences together. Cats and dogs often bridge both second and third dimensions as their human caretakers operate in a higher form of consciousness. So I was thinking about this the other day and I was trying to see if I had to explain dancing to my cat, how would he understand it? It's the same thing. If, if a being was to explain something that you don't have any concept of, it would be hard to understand. So an overlapping of dimensions occurs to tailor for constantly evolving consciousness. And you don't experience these sudden jumps. I believe it's very gradual. The gradual nature of it is what is so amazing. We don't understand time. Human beings currently exist within the third density, where our consciousness is now aware that we are in fact alive. This momentum of self-awareness moves our focus out of the collective unconscious and more deeply into the conscious mind. Psychological patterns often spur a construct where physical, spiritual, and egotistical needs graph a new behavioral complex. This new behavioral complex allows for the comprehension of much more profound spiritual concepts. However, this newfound analytical function has a tendency to completely ignore what it cannot physically grasp. The realization that there exists an ethereal world with beings who have much greater influence and power is often what initiates spiritual growth. However, so many disharmonies ensue from conflicting psychological behaviors that spiritual growth is often brought to a complete standstill in favor of physical gratification. Nevertheless, the spiritual world still persists. The third dimension is the first time consciousness is not only made aware of the duality, but also heavily influenced into aligning with one or other side. The service to self side or the service to others side. Service to self being the negative side, service to others being the positive side. The third dimension often establishes the bedrock for major spiritual upheavals due to its spiritual immaturity. This state no longer represents a perfect symbiotic relationship with the Mother Earth, which we had in the second and first densities, and is not realized enough to embrace the oneness as a whole, which we experience in the fourth, fifth, and sixth densities. So conscious spiritual development often enters into an ethereal war for your soul. Beings of the light and dark constantly influence souls to polarize and are often only ever embraced because of their heavy involvement in the physical world. Very few people truly embrace the notions of spirituality or reincarnation, let alone whole sequences of lives in non-human forms. If perception and understanding is limited to a singular life, then the continuation of the soul is not understood, and dimensional evolvements become meaningless. Nothing substantial can ever truly be accomplished if you still believe nothing exists beyond that of a singular life. Earth is currently going through a transition in this moment, a reality revolution into the fourth dimension or fourth density. Some people call it the fifth dimension. 
if you use a different way of understanding that the fourth dimension is time, then you can treat the fifth dimension as being something beyond time. But in this particular way of understanding it, the fourth density is what's discussed by Ra in the Law of One. The climax of the upcoming ascension, I believe, started in 2012. That's what I believe. And it's been spreading. I believe it's been going on this whole time. And although the third density is focused upon the physical world, the fourth density has a primary focus on the spiritual. In many ways, I think that's when we start to see the spiritual. We start to see our thoughts becoming reality much faster. I believe that thoughts become things much, much more efficiently in this new light because the density of light that we're experiencing is changing. Just experience the earth going around the sun and then the sun being pulled around in orbit around the galaxy and it goes through certain quadrants where there are more or less light in it. Understand that we're floating in a gigantic ocean. Imagine space as an ocean and if there was a wave going through it, it would be so subtle we wouldn't feel it when we're just kind of resting in this big ocean that's holding the earth. That's the gravity that's occurring. And so understanding that helps to understand there's this change in light that occurs. And as we go through it, I believe if you imagine it's like looking at a grow room or a place where people grow different plants and there's some lights that are brighter and some that are not bright and they have different stages in which a planet is basically like a garden and they're growing creators that's what i believe that's happening and there's a whole process to it and it never gets out of hand it's always under control it's an amazing system that's been set up and we're in this sort of process that we're going through now profound spiritual concepts such as enlightenment and aspects of unconditional love must be understood as the next steps to progress from the third to fourth dimension these seeds were planted and allowed to grow in individuals who have accepted that it is time to open the doors to the spiritual world now as human beings are the most complex forms of embodied consciousness on the planet we will still retain our current shape and forms. What will change is the importance we place on achieving such profound spiritual objectives. This will mark a turning point soon, leading to a spirituality playing a much more dominant role in the world. I believe that is happening now. I believe that Ascension utilizes two primary methods in order for a successful transition from one density to another to take place there's deconstruction followed by reconstruction this ascension is currently moving through a process of powerful deconstruction which you see on tv on the news everything seems to be falling apart it's going through a deconstruction phase absolutely tearing apart what we once considered normal life what is truly remarkable is how the deconstruction phase tailors itself to the individual's needs when we go through this time through this shift each negative habit self-limiting belief fixation upon the physical world and destructive tendency has been or will be uprooted in the most personalized way there will be personal bankruptcies corporate liquidations lawsuits embarrassments divorces tax problems health concerns and all the emotional issues because people have not figured out how to think as more light comes in growing on a gradual basis as the universe works perfectly in that way these things will happen more often because people live in their fears the world needs to embrace deconstruction as something perfectly acceptable because there is another level that occurs once deconstruction happens in all of the universe you see it in from the smallest to the largest comparable to the movements of mother nature in the same way 
that a tree sheds old leaves and grows new shoots. The human being must shed limiting beliefs and replace them with unconditional love. Right now, in this moment, and all those things will go away. Because love will solve your divorce, and love will solve your corporate liquidation and your bankruptcy and your fears. All it takes is unconditional love. What constrains us and shackles us upon this earth is our egotistical behavior. However, once the dust settles and you realize how little of the physical world there is left to grasp, you will inevitably venture into the spiritual world, and there's no turning back when this happens. The fourth dimension is interesting, as I asked questions of Jim McCarty, who was the scribe of the raw material in that interview session. He explained that the fourth density body will live for 90,000 years. And in interviews, it is shown that our right lobe becomes a way of feeding ourselves. And it's interesting when you read Neville Goddard and they describe what happens and you go into your next garment as you move up into this next world, the new earth that's promised at the end of the Bible, that it's completely different body type that you live in and people have had visions of it where they can eat any food but they don't actually have to eat they just experience the joy of the food in that consciousness and they live for 90,000 years and there is different spiritual learnings because it's love and understanding suddenly you can hear and understand the thoughts of everyone else and the earth becomes kind of sort of a group mind a social memory complex in the fourth density fourth density is what happened on venus according to ra and a third of the planet or is left in moving into fourth density service to others and service to others and the rest that were service to self or somewhere in between had to change in the law of one material it indicates if you're over 51 percent service to others in your lifetime you will move up to fourth density in the next lifetime and if it's five percent if it's 95 percent service to self you'll move up to fourth density in the next lifetime on another planet that is fourth density service to self so there's big differences in a service to self or service to others lifestyle if you were on a planet that was service to self it would be a military dictatorship where there is an elite class, always a super elite class, that is completely dominating. And there has been this push on in our planet to become service to self. But I really think worldwide we've crossed the line and become service to others. I see it all over the world and it's a really exciting thing. I think the world is waking up and it's waking up as a service to others world. There's a social media complex that is forming and it is powerful. I think when it joins together using the power of reality creation, that it's going to be a force that can't be stopped. It doesn't matter what's been happening. And the duality will be transcended because there will not be a need for it. It takes a greater understanding of the universe and moves beyond that duality, moving in to the fourth density. The other thing that Neville Goddard mentions is that we will not be excrementitious, which I love that word. The idea is that you will not have to go to the bathroom anymore. And he would mock religious leaders saying there would be golden toilets in heaven. (laughs) So the idea is our bodies will function in a different way. We will not use energy in the same way. And this is an actual physical body. So I still haven't fully been able to understand in my mind or conceive of it and maybe that's what's amazing about it the fifth density is the home of the ascended masters it is a very powerful frequency compared to the third dimension physicality is now an option where a world of high frequency energy becomes the primary way of life the fifth density is where Ra would hold Carla Ruckert's body while they would do the law of one channelings It is a very powerful frequency and physicality is now an option where the world of high frequency energy becomes 
the primary way of life. The human body becomes far too constraining for a high frequency being who likes to constantly exert its energy and power. It therefore undergoes a substantial vibrational raising until it completely detaches itself from the physical world. There are ethereal planets that house such fifth dimensional existences, I believe, as they still need an ascending planet to give them ascension jumps into the next dimension. I believe there is invisible planets. The planetary relationship with its inhabitants is a very crucial one that operates on many levels. One of the most important functions is to initiate a natural curve of shifting energies in a direct incline, or what is known as a jump. It would be very difficult for a planet's inhabitants to ascend without it following suit and vice versa. Enough time is usually given for everybody to prepare themselves. Many ascended masters who operate in this higher frequency have to severely decrease their vibrations in order to make an appearance on Earth. This often warrants brief encounters unless they choose to temporarily incarnate here. So there are a lot of star seeds or wanderers that are in the sixth or fifth densities that may have reincarnated here. It's pretty amazing to do that. It's a huge sacrifice. Sixth density existence welcomes consciousness into a state where godlike powers are expressed. The sixth dimension is the highest point of individualization within the first universal cycle that still identifies and communicates with itself from all of its past lives. If I told you that you currently already exist in the sixth dimension as a higher self, you'd probably be confused because the concept of linear time has defined physical life itself. However, the notion of all past, present, and future being one as a higher self is an important hierarchy that establishes a route for intuition to take place. Very few beings maintain a human-like appearance in the sixth dimension. Most resemble large masses of white energy, having animal-like characteristics or completely manipulate the way they look depending on what emotional experiences they would like to portray. Sixth dimensional beings often roam around lower vibrational planets in hopes of exerting influence upon them. This is done to sway entire populations into believing significantly more powerful beings or gods. Some channeling seem to indicate the seventh density looks like a magnificent white tunnel of energy that explodes consciousness into a state of existence with the Creator. This large upward flow of energy removes the soul from creation itself and allows it to exist within a field of unconditional love. The seventh dimension acts as the last dimension most forms of consciousness will experience in their universal cycle. I believe that many choose to stay within this seventh density experience, and some can choose to move on and do more if they choose to. The seventh dimension acts as the last dimension for most of us. This limitless dimension appears as an endless field of white energy where everything enjoys heightened ecstasy. Many beings have never progressed beyond this point and therefore don't understand that there is a continuing path to further develop their consciousness. Those who continue onward have a powerful destiny to become creators. There is an eighth density mentioned in the Law of One but no explanation. So the eighth through twelve densities would be considered advanced creator school I think they're more of a dimension at that point in time you've transcended light so I think calling them density is not the best term because that's a density of light that's when you go into creator school and we can see creator school in the universe all around us which is experienced by a much smaller percentage of beings in order for consciousness to progress beyond the first seven dimensions they are initiated back into the creation in the eighth dimension to take one of two paths. Clearly, we can see that in our own solar system. The masculine progression as a sun or star, or the feminine progression as a planet. The masculine progression uses the eighth dimension to keep propelling forward 
up to the 12th dimension, while the feminine progression moves backward out of the 8th dimension and into an alternate existence as a 7th dimensional planet. 7th dimensional beings choose to allow their bodies to evolve into planets, to act as a home for other dimensional existences. From dimensions 1 through 5, this is performed to create a stable environment and encourage the relevant self-realizations of other dimensional beings. It is important to establish the symbiotic relationship between all the dimensional beings on Earth and the soul of the planet itself, or Gaia. Without Gaia, life would not exist. A thriving planet must have a seventh dimensional soul in the same way a human body must have a third dimensional soul. If you could look at us, we are similar in that we have a similar geometry. The geometry of the Merkaba you can see in both. Of course, there are complexities in both, but something similar. We are actually geometries. Without her, inhabitant Gaia would not have reason to create Earth because her spiritual realizations involve sustaining other dimensional existences. In order to create a physical planet, Gaia needed to learn how to control the elements, earth, wind, fire, and water, and then manipulate them into self-sustaining cycles. Energetic structures such as the process of reincarnation are created well before the physical environment ever materializes. A seventh dimensional being undergoes four ascensions before reconnecting with the seventh dimension tunnel of energy back into the field of unconditional love. Second dimension to third dimension, third dimension to fourth dimension, fourth dimension to fifth dimension, and fifth dimension into a pure energy existence capable of moving back into a state of unconditional love. We are created from the stars and we shall return to the stars. Eighth dimensional existence within a masculine progression is when consciousness takes the form of a sun. The sun in our solar system has a gravitational pull strong enough to revolve around multiple seventh dimensional planets and therefore all manner of lower dimensional inhabitants living on those planets. In the Law of One Material, it's indicated that the Council of Nine that is supposedly on Saturn is from the eighth dimension or density in the rings of Saturn. So it's more than just the sun. The sun has living beings outside of the sun because we are all the sun. We are all in the body of the sun because we are all light. The only light we are getting is from the stars, those little twinkles of light. Mostly, they we're getting it from the sun. So that is the light that makes us. And the sun in our solar system has a gravitational pull strong enough to revolve around multiple seventh dimensional planets and therefore all manner of lower dimensional inhabitants on those planets. Its primary function is to provide a stable solar system for lower dimensional beings to undergo their relevant self-realizations. The sun's light actually consists of multiple colors with a visual predominance of white even though it may look yellow from Earth due to the blue atmospheric contrast. The sun is literally burning thoughts into the manifested creation on such a powerful level that it produces an extreme amount of heat and light. These thoughts are also referred to as the overriding archetypes that govern a solar system's precise rules of governance. These archetypes are discussed in the Law of One material through the tarot, there are systems that identify the archetypes of the Creator. The Sun anchors the collective unconscious. The collective unconscious connects these overriding archetypes with the individual's subconscious mind. Our mind is created by the Sun, and so we will have similar minds on most of the planets. In such a way, we are born with set rules that determine the construct of the physical world. We feel the effects of gravity because the overriding archetype subconsciously details how our bodies must abide by the law of gravity. The sun is creating and sustaining life as the alpha, 
being of this solar system. If you understand the inner workings of this concept, you can easily see why many ancient cultures such as the Mayans, Egyptians, and Greeks chose the sun as their supreme deity. The ninth dimension is entered by exploding your elements outward into a powerful ball of churning energy as a supernova. The ninth dimension signals the first of two complete dimensional existences that sustain deconstructive cycles. The sun dies down into what is known as a red giant after it runs out of hydrogen to convert into helium via nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is what generates heat for the sun. When the sun stops producing heat, it starts collapsing in on itself until the helium atoms join with carbon atoms expanding its outer layer causing it to cool off and eventually cast this outer layer off as a planetary nebula. This deconstruction phase allows for the essential building blocks in the planetary nebula to be ejected out of the sun into the surrounding galaxy. The planetary nebula is a product of deconstruction that has been recycled out of the sun and allows for new stars and planets to be created. Gravity continues to pull carbon atoms together until the red giant's core is solely composed of iron. At this point, fusion ceases and the iron atoms are crushed together causing the red giant to explode out a shock wave and form a supernova. Another path occurs when a sun gradually dies down into a white dwarf and attracts another star into its orbit. Matter is gradually stripped off the smaller star, which causes enough volatility to then also explode into a supernova. This ninth dimension is about embracing the element of deconstruction. The tenth dimension is entered when a supernova continues its deconstructive phase and forms a black hole. As Ra explains, the black hole is the closest you get to God in this density. A supernova undergoes a gravitational collapse directly into a black hole after running out of materials to fuel its existence. A second path exists where the supernova dies down into a neutron star, only then to undergo gravitational collapse once the neutron star dies and also forms into a black hole. Black holes are one of the most sacred and powerful universal mechanisms in existence. They are the epitome of the deconstruction phase, consuming surrounding materials, dust, stars, planets, and even light into its energetic core. The observable power of a black hole comes forth when it joins two separate points in the universe together. This bridging action creates implicit ties with both sides as energies are now within proximity of each other. A tenth dimensional being understands that to exist within this universe is just to consume resources in order to experience growth. Growth of a black hole occurs as it continues consuming extremely large quantities of surrounding materials. It therefore releases anything other than what it truly means to exist as a consuming mechanism so it can propel into the next dimension without hesitation. The eleventh dimension can only be entered once multiple black holes have conjoined together to form in two what is known as a supermassive black hole. This compilation of resources becomes extremely vital for a sustainable ascension into the eleventh dimension. A supermassive black hole entering from its stockpile of resources into what is known as a quasar. A quasar is a ring of bright, fiery light that sits above the supermassive black hole and illuminates the entire galaxy. The amount of energy in a quasar is so powerful that the entire galaxy clusters and moves within a singular spiraling formation. Supermassive black holes are like giant power generators keeping a galaxy alive by reverse thrusting out all of its previously stored energy. A supermassive black hole does not connect two separate points of the universe together, but acts to connect the universe to the unmanifest. 
also referred to as the nothingness, or the void, as Dr. Joe likes to call it. The unmanifest is the polar opposite of unconditional love. The unmanifest is where creators initiate a universe. It is the place where nothing exists, nothing transpires, and nothing can do anything. Supermassive black holes are the centers of galaxies that tie together the manifested creation with the unmanifest, and in doing so anchors the universe in place. As a galaxy, the eleventh dimension marks the final dimension of existence in the manifested creation. The final realization comes forth. When eleventh dimensional being discovers the true nature of the limitless state that the creators exist in, rather than the outdated need to mimic creation by consuming and burning resources to sustain itself and others around it, when an eleventh dimensional being comes upon its final realization, the flow of resources from the supermassive black hole is allowed to run out and the galaxy ceases to exist. Remnant particles and materials allow for the formation of new galaxies. However, the original entity is no longer within the creation. It moves out of creation and into a truly beautiful and limitless state of unconditional love. In the beginning, there was only unconditional love, followed by a seed of the light that sparked the first creator school. Unconditional love is completely self-sustainable and the absolute highest form of energy known to existence. Creators are obsessed with the field of unconditional love. It is almost like finding a partner you view as absolutely perfect in every possible way. It sparked an incredible curiosity to discover where this field of unconditional love came from and what unique characteristics attracted them so much. Creations were brought to life to observe the nature of this energy in the most rudimentary of forms and went so far as to even allow dark energies into their creations to observe its reactions further. The fact that souls are still floating upwards towards unconditional love despite the dark influences is what makes creation so remarkable. The twelfth dimension is one of creators. It is the graduation ceremony of creator school. The universal cycle comes complete around and existence itself becomes voluntary. Limitless potential is expressed and you now have the capability to exist as one with unconditional love or go on to create other universes. Mastering the twelve dimensions may take multiple universal cycles to achieve. We therefore enter creation many times over. That black hole up there is you. There are twelfth dimensional masters who've been able to maintain an individual presence within the manifested creation, even though their main body of consciousness no longer has a need for it. These beings are known as the master complex, as they provide a hierarchy for other beings to follow them out of creation. The void is where the initial idea of a universe is conceived. From this initial thought, a series of complex, interweaving energy patterns are replicated into the blueprints of the universe. This initial design is powerful enough to create a self-sustainable creation that draws upon unconditional love to experience growth. A supermassive black hole is then used to bridge nothingness to the universe in order to stabilize the universe's existence. This process indicates an illogical jump from nothingness to sudden creating of the universe and then bridging the two. The universal bridge only appears once. Both extremes of polarity are created. It explains why an eleventh dimensional being may not just ascend out of creation, it must exit creation through the extreme realization as a creator. It also explains why we may not perceive anything before the creation of this universe. Nothingness prevents us conceivably moving back out of creation. The most accepted pathway for any being is to therefore ascend forward and graduate from creator school. By then, all of this will feel rudimentary in comparison 
to the amount of unconditional love you will be feeling. Isn't that a beautiful universe to imagine? This is described on different levels in the Urantia book as well. And continuously, we get reaffirmations of this from multiple channeled sources. The Dolores Cannon material from hundreds of QHHT sessions. This idea of these higher dimensions is beyond amazing to think about. Now, in the Dolores Cannon material, and they go to the library and they ask about the creation of the solar system, they explain that the, it was the archaics. They came and made these planets, so they have assistance. And uh, they did not make Jupiter as a living planet. Jupiter in the Dolores Cannon book is explained as being sort of an extra light bulb in our solar system if we were to expand to that point. And it's made so that you can light it. I believe the red eye is just like the end of a wick. We just light it up and it could become another sun. And that's why it was created. But it is not the living being. All of the other planets are living. And then in the Law of One material, Ra says the same thing, that Jupiter is not, is one with the Logos, which is the sun. So they're maybe the same. Anyway, but that's on the brink. That's a 7.9 density being that's ready to go into 8 density. If we can move to that point, you never know. It's up to us. We can move up to the greatest dimensions and our entire solar system is built for something so wonderful in the future so amazing I can't even begin to imagine it why do we have to be stuck in our hates and fears in our worries in this dimension now when we can start to bring in the light and be of service to others and move to amazing dimensions and densities and incarnations in the future that will change your life I'd like to know what your opinion on this is. Perhaps you don't agree with that. But in the Law of One material, it does indicate that the galaxy is a living being. I can't stop thinking about it. I tried to talk about this idea in my episode on the Logos. And on that episode, I talked way too fast because I was so excited about it. So it's not a very good episode. I apologize for that one. But I do like to perceive this idea of multiple consciousness and I think it begins like as an ant and then the queen ant starts to perceive more than one ant at the same time that's the beginning of God's school so imagine the planet is conscious of all of us at the same time and imagine that the sun is conscious of all of our consciousness at the same time so imagine just living two lives at the same time Imagine living four lives at the same time where you are conscious of all four bodies. Imagine six or eight or 12 or a hundred. Imagine a planet of it. Imagine a galaxy of it. Imagine being conscious of all of the lives in your galaxy. While you have other eighth dimensional beings under you, you're still a part of all of them. Imagine that's you because you are doing it right now because those beings are beyond time and they are us when we look at the stars they are us so please let me know what you think of this fascinating and wonderful concept of our universe in the comments it would be greatly appreciated and if you have any other materials that are syncing with this even if they contradict it let me know and I'll look into it for sure all episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.